Okay, so now for demos. So the first flow we're going to cover is going to be relatively simple. Okay, we will cover the basic adapter authentication flow that will protect JavaScript adapter. So this is this has nothing to do with auth. Okay, this is uh, strictly uh, to, to uh, recall how adapter authentication works. Okay, so just to remind you, the client will have uh, get secret data uh, invocation. Okay, so uh, it will be intercepted by JavaScript authentication adapter. The authentication adapter will return auth status required, right? It will be received by challenge handler. Challenge handler will collect credentials submit them and then JavaScript adapter will return uh, JavaScript authentication adapter will return auth status done and only notifying the client that authentication uh, is complete. So then client will make get secret data request again this time it will hit the JavaScript data adapter because we're already authenticated and JavaScript data adapter will return data plus identities. So identities that's actually something new I don't I'm not sure if you've ever seen it before okay but uh, we will take a look at that right and important thing here is note the uh, red highlight that's the authentication phase okay so here we're asking for data here we're authenticating here we're once again asking for data this time we're authenticated and here we're getting data and identities of our authentication okay so let's take a look how this works okay so I got a uh, uh, mobile first 7.0 uh, installed in my uh, studio, in my mo uh, mobile first studio, okay, and I have several projects in my workspace. So uh, all of those projects, all of those things will be available to download, okay, look for a link below those videos, and uh, you will get them uh, in uh, the exactly the exact state as they are right now, which means in a starting state, okay, okay, so it's not yet configured for auth, that's something that you need to do, and this is something that I will do in this video. So uh, before we actually do auth, let's see what do I have right now. Okay, so my common, I'm going to use preview here. Okay, so this is my application, hello auth security, and it has four buttons, get secret data from JavaScript adapter, from Java adapter, from external Java server, and from external Node.js server. And note that uh, JavaScript adapter works exactly the way it worked prior to 7.0, okay? It's still protected by security test, and uh, everything is absolutely the same. Java adapter, external Java, and external Node.js servers, they are protected by auth, okay? And we will cover them lately. So uh, my first button, get secret data from JavaScript adapter. Let's see how it works. So first of all, let's take a look at my authentication config file. Okay, so uh, it's very, it should be very familiar to you uh, if you know how adapter authentication works. And if you don't know how adapter authentication works, I advise you to actually go to our uh, getting starting page, mobile first getting started page and learn about it. Okay, because this whole demo will be based on it. So I got a realm called adapter authentication realm. Okay, it's using a login module called adapter authentication login module which is defined right over here. So I'm using com worklet integration auth adapter authenticator for class name, which means I'm using adapter authentication. And I got two parameters. Login function is uh, authentication adapter dot on auth required and logout function is authentication adapter dot on logout. Okay, so very simple realm for adapter authentication. Now I have a security test that I will use to protect my adapter procedure and uh, this security test, it's a custom security test, okay, called adapter authentication security test and it has two realms. So for user authentication it has adapter authentication realm right and for device authentication it has device no provision in realm okay so uh, the custom I'm using my custom realm that I've created for adapter authentication but I'm using the built uh, uh, the one that built in in mobile first platform for uh, device authentication so this is user this is device okay so note the only place I'm going to use this security test that's when I'm going to protect JavaScript adapter for the rest of things Java adapter and uh, external services I will use realm name because security test that's uh, 
a concept incompatible with auth. Okay, so uh, that's it for configuration. Let's see my adapters. So JavaScript data adapter. Let's take a look at the XML file. Uh, single procedure get secret data and it's protected as I've said by security test adapter authentication security test. Okay, so get secret data is very very simple procedure, right? So uh, it returns data secret data from JavaScript adapter, but it also returns an identities object. Okay, so identities that's uh, your identities for uh, every for uh, various realms that your uh, adapter or application is protected with. So for example, here I'm setting user identity as uh, active user for adapter authentication realm device identity as active user for WL device no provisioning realm and application identity for WL authenticity realm. So since I'm not using authenticity in my sample, I will most probably get null everywhere for application identity, right? But I do want to see uh, user and device identity, okay? So in this case, note in JavaScript adapter, I'm getting them manually, okay? So I'm getting active user for a specific realm and that's basically my identities, okay? So this is what's supposed to return from my JavaScript adapter. As I've said, as I've shown, it's protected by authentication adapter, and that's the adapter I use for authentication, right? Uh, authentication adapter has a single uh, procedure, submit credentials. It's very, very standard adapter authentication here, okay? On auth required will return all status required, okay, and optional error message. So my submit credentials function gets uh, receives a username and password and validates them against hard coded values of MFP MFP. In case it is MFP MFP both username and password, I'm creating a user identity object with user ID. It's gonna be MFP, same as my username, and I'm setting custom attributes. Okay, because uh, I can actually set custom attributes for my uh, adapter procedures, for my user identity, sorry. So then I'm setting active user for adapter authentication realm. That's the realm that I'm setting user for, okay? That's a user identity. And I'm returning authentication status done. So this means I've completed my authentication. Else, in case username and password are not the MFP, MFP, I'm getting, I'm returning on auth required with invalid credentials as an error message. So very simple adapter for adapter based authentication. Let's see the application itself, okay? So uh, you've seen four buttons, get data from JS adapter, Java adapter, Java server, Node.js server, right? So that's the main page. And in addition, my application has a login page, okay? Which has username, password, and login button fields, okay? So not focusing too much here, it's pretty standard adapter authentication, okay? And uh, important thing is that my main page also has the output text area. Okay, so that's where I'm actually going to output all the data retrieved from uh, various sources. Now, if I take a look at the JS file, I got a single file here, main JS. Okay, so I'm uh, putting here my server IP. Okay, I will uh, explain later why. Okay, so that those are my functions. Get data from JS adapter, get data from Java adapter, and the rest. So uh, let's actually see at the very bottom, I have a challenge handler. So this is my adapter authentication challenge handler. Okay, challenge handler for adapter authentication realm. And it's absolutely standard challenge handler uh, for adapter authentication. It doesn't do any uh, extraordinary here. Okay, so it checks whether authentication status, uh, whether this property is present and returns true. Otherwise, it returns false for its custom response function. And in handle challenge, according to the status, whether it's required or done, it shows or hides main page and login page, okay? So this is a very, very, very standard adapter authentication, okay? So let's see what happens when I do get data from JS adapter. Uh, well, nothing really new happens here. I'm creating a invocation data object. 
my adapter is JS data adapter, procedure is get secret data, I'm sending no parameters. Okay, so if we take a look here, uh, I'm starting my flow with get secret data, and uh, it will be intercepted my adapter, I will get all status required, and I will need to log in. Okay, so note I'm doing invoke procedure, okay, and then once invoke procedure is done, I'm uh, outputting Okay, I'm putting to my output uh, text area the response invocation result. Okay, whatever has returned there, invocation, uh, the invocation result, I will put it in the output. And I'm also using a plugin to actually format JSON. So output format method JSON. So let's start with get data from JS adapter. Let's go back to Chrome. And I actually want to see a network tab here. Okay, so we can actually see the network traffic as well. Okay, and I'm starting with get secret data from JS adapter. Clicked. Okay, so uh, as a result, as you can see, I'm uh, on my login form. Okay, so if I'm taking a look at the request uh, response round trip, so the first one got for one that's anti XSRF, that's expected response. That's a response I've received of status required. Okay, so that triggered my challenge handler. Okay, and now I'm on a login screen. I can do some bad credentials, and that will return me invalid credentials, error invalid credentials as expected, and I can give some good ones MFP, MFP. Okay, login. So, and as you can see, I can see my data. Okay, so let's see what happened here. I'm, uh, I made a request with valid credentials and I got off status done. Okay, so then uh, I was required to authenticate for device no provision in Realm because I've also defined that my uh, adapter procedure is uh, protected by device no provision in Realm. So once I'm authenticated, okay, I'm actually getting my data. So data and know that I have my identities object. So let's take a look at that here. So uh, data is secret data from JavaScript adapter as expected. Identities object. I have user identity object which is user ID MFP is user authenticated one means true. Custom attributes. Application identity I'm not using authenticity as expected now and I got device identity which is dummy identity because I'm using preview but if I would have run it on an actual device on an actual de real device I would see here uh, device ID and various types of that uh, various properties of that device. Okay, so uh, this, uh, as you see, this working, uh, this is working as expected. Okay, so uh, let's go and actually see how do we work with Java adapter and that's actually something new. So Java data adapter. That's the adapter uh, I've created, okay, and it's also, it is also relatively simple. So I'm going to resource file, okay, that's the file that actually contains implementation code for the adapter, okay, and note I have path slash API, so this adapter will be accessible at the slash API, and the actual method that I'm try I, I will protect will be accessible using slash get secret data. Okay, so let's actually start with the security disabled. Okay, I'm gonna comment out the security related features. Okay, so currently security is disabled for this specific uh, adapter. I've set up all the security enabled false. So this means I can actually go and let's say localhost new security model. Uh, let's see which one. Yep, that's the one. Okay, I can do that's the name of my project slash adapter slash Java data adapter slash API slash get secret data. I'm getting secret data, okay? I'm immediately getting the JSON object, okay? Because currently I've disabled all the protection for my adapter, okay? I've set enabled all security enabled equals false. So uh, now let's enable this, okay? So I've enabled security, okay? And I said that the scope that protects this specific method is adapter authentication realm, as we've defined it previously, okay? 
So note I'm not using security tests anymore. I'm just specifying realms. And if I wanted to protect my adapter procedure, this one with multiple realms, I would just do it like this, realm two, realm three, realm four. Okay, so, and this will uh, actually, uh, this would have caused a client to authenticate with all of those realms. Okay. So uh, let's see what happens if I try to just refresh my browser. Okay, immediately I'm getting methane authorization. And if I take a look at the network, okay, I'm getting 401, okay, that says methane, uh, missing authorization because I'm indeed, indeed need of, to authorize f to get access to that URL. And if I take a look at response headers, I would actually see that it contains www authenticate. So uh, bare realm uh, IBM mobile first authentication. And I need to authenticate for scope adapter authentication realm. So uh, mobile first platform client, the client side is smart enough to process this data automatically and to make all the relevant requests automatically. Okay, so let's take a look at the client side code here. So get data from Java adapter. Okay, so this is my request URL. Okay, slash adapter, slash Java data adapter, slash API, slash get secret data. Note that it's relative URL because uh, the API I'm going to use, WL resource request, it supports both relative and absolute URLs. But since uh, my Java adapter runs on the same server as my application is, okay, so I'm going to use a relative URL. So I'm making request, new resource request, okay, setting my URL and saying the method is get. Okay, request send. And once I'm going to get the response, I want to put the response text into the output uh, text area and format JSON. Okay, so note, note that I don't have any authentication code related here. Okay, because the same authentication infrastructure will be used here as previously. My adapter uh, procedure, my method here, Java method, is protected by this scope or this realm. And this realm means adapter authentication. So once I need to authenticate to get access to this code, I will have to go through standard adapter authentication. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. Let's clean everything and let's do get secret data from Java adapter. Okay, so uh, as expected, I'm getting a login screen. Okay, so I'm currently go making requests to auth protected resource, but from developer and from user perspective, my flow is exactly the same. So I am made a request to uh, get secret data. I got invalid token, probably I had, had something cached from previously. Okay, <clears throat> so and it says scope adapter authentication realm. So then I'm going to... Uh, so this is my Java request to Java adapter, and this is a request to authorization server. So note it says authorization. So currently my framework detected automatically, the mobile first framework detected automatically that uh, this re resource requires authorization, and it trying automatically to get authorization. However, uh, in order to get authorization response, first, I'm getting challenged for that adapter authentication realm I've defined previously. My authentication status is required, so this is standard adapter authentication. I can do bad credentials. I will once again get error, right? Exactly the same. I can do good credentials, MFP, MFP, and I will get data, secret data from Java adapter. So note that uh, everything here, multiple round trips, everything happened automatically without any inter uh, intervention from developer or user perspective. Okay, so eventually uh, authorization and token endpoints return whatever is required, all the tokens. Here you can see those tokens, it's a lot of gibberish. Okay, and eventually the get secret data request. Okay, if you take a look at the request header, request header, it has all of those. That's actually the authorization header that contains uh, user and device identity and uh, access token and everything we've talked about previously. Okay, so, but currently I'm just getting data from Java adapter. Okay, I want to get more. So let's get back to the code and let's see what else can we get. So 
if once you're starting using OAuth, okay, provided by mobile first, you have uh, what's called a security context. And security context, that's a very convenient API that allows you to get user identity, get device identity, get application identity. Okay, so currently I've commented out uh, this code, so I should probably get my user, device, and application identity. If I click Java Adapter again, I've clicked it, and yep, I got my application identity my application ID, environment, I got my device identity, right? However, uh, hmm, my user identity is null. I wonder uh, why my user identity is null. So, and the reason for that, okay, is that uh, resource request uh, doesn't know, uh, not resource request, resource server, right, doesn't know which realms do you use to protect your application. It's pretty easy to detect information about application, okay, and it's uh, not that hard to detect uh, information about the device, but users can have multiple realms, you can have multiple realms, you can have multiple configurations, so for user uh, you need to have one more setting that will actually tell the platform which realm is considered a user realm, okay. So uh, in order to configure that you need to go to application descriptor, okay, and here you have to uh, new entries, okay, something you didn't have prior to uh, Mobile First 7.0. So first one is access token expiration, and by default it's uh, 300, uh, 3600, okay, so that's minutes, and here you can actually define uh, how, how long do you want your token, uh, that's uh, seconds, sorry, and here you can actually define the expiration time for your uh, access token. So this actually means how long is the access token will be valid, okay? So you can change this, but in addition to expiration you can also define user identity realms, okay? So I'm gonna take the realm name, I'm gonna add it to user identity realms, okay, and this will uh, this will tell mobile first platform and you can have multiple uh, in the order of uh, priority, okay, and this will actually tell mobile first server which realms are considered user identity realms because you're not using security tests anymore, you're just using realms to protect your resources, okay, so I've deployed my application, I'm going back here, I'm gonna use a little hack to wipe access token. So if I authenticate again, logging, yeah, I can see my user identity, ID, MFP, realm, adapter authentication realm, etc. So now I have user identity, application identity, and device identity. And also I have a secret data from Java adapter. And note how easy it is to get all of that information in your code, okay? So you don't need to do uh, anything extra and you don't need to worry about authentication in your Java adapter because you've set up your authentication once and you can reuse it. Okay, so now that we've covered Java adapters, uh, let's take a look at how do we actually protect uh, external resources. Okay, so if we go back to our deck, we've covered this flow, okay? Where we invoke in JavaScript adapter. We've covered this flow where we have authorization server, JavaScript authentication adapter, and Java adapter. Okay, so uh, you made request, we made request get secret data, auth filter return 401 plus uh, the authorization scope. We've asked for authorization. Uh, since uh, the authorization, the scope contains adapter authentication realm that JavaScript authentication adapter kicked in, it returned auth status required. We've submitted credentials, it's returned all the, all the status done, and uh, this helped us to get the authorization. So eventually we've made the resource request get secret data with authorization here again to the Java adapter and got the data plus identities from there. Okay, once again note that this is authentication flow and it is exactly the same and it was pre as it was in previous example. Okay, so we're still using the same realm, so authentication is still the same. We're not using different challenge handler, we're not using any different code. It's it's still the same authentication, but now we're using this authentication to get authorization header, okay, to actually access Java adapter. So we've seen that. 
So the next flow would be the complex flow where you have external resources. OK, so we're going to cover both Node.js and Liberty server. OK, and in this case, client will make the initial request to that external server. Authorization filter will uh, intercept that request return for one plus scope. OK, similar to Java adapter, but this time we're talking about external server. So we'll try to get uh, authorization for that scope right because the this resource will be protected by a specific scope and this will trigger our adapter based authentication once again adapter based authentication nothing new eventually we'll get that authorization header okay and with that authorization header we'll once again ask for uh, our protected resource and we'll get data and we will also get identities okay so note that in this case all of those parts are reside on mobile first server. Okay, so even though Java Adapter is considered a resource server, right, it's a uh, plain resource, okay, it still has some access to the context of your mobile first server in order to get information about users, right, uh, user identities, device identities, etc. But it's not using any of it because it doesn't have to, doesn't need to, since it, since it has authorization header. Now in this scenario, we're talking about external server. It doesn't know anything about adapter authentication. It simply doesn't care about it. Okay, all it cares about is authorization information, authorization token, and that's exactly what we're gonna give it. Okay, so let's get back to code and let's start with Java server. Okay, so here in my setup, I've already installed a standalone Liberty. Okay, and uh, you can see it also here, standalone Liberty and localhost. I will actually start it. Okay, so uh, once you try to run this tutorial uh, at home, I got all the instructions in the config file. Okay, so if you open server XML, you can do it from here or you can uh, open it from here or go direct to file uh, manually. Double click here, server configuration. So I got all the required steps uh, here as step one, step two, etc. So there are several steps. First, uh, you need to actually uh, teach your Liberty server to work with the mobile first auth uh, authorization filter. Okay, and then you actually need to protect your uh, resources according to rules you define. Okay, so let's start. First thing is uh, step one. You need to copy those this file and this file, okay, uh, jar file and .mf file to your Liberty server. So jar file needs to be needs to go to your Liberty slash extension slash lib. The .mf file needs to go to your Liberty slash extension slash lib slash features. So those two files are actually implementation of mobile first authorization filter. So you can find those files in the project in your uh, mobile first project uh, under external server libraries. That's those two files, right? Or you can find them if you're using a standalone server, production server installation inside of the installation folder. So as I've said, you need to copy those files to your uh, Liberty extension folder. So jar file goes here to lib and .mf file goes to feature. And if you don't have lib and features folder under extension, just create them and restart your Liberty and it will pick them up. OK, so this is basically uh, adding the uh, mobile first auth functionality, auth filter functionality to your server. Good. We did the first step. Second step, edit or create your liberty slash server slash your server name slash server and file. OK, so that's the file server environment. It needs to be exactly the same place where server XML is. And in this uh, file, you need to add the URL to mobile first platform server. OK, so the validation of access token, validation of authorization header and all uh, the information contained in it uh, is not performed on every request because here we're talking about external server and doing this on every request would require uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of bandwidth and will introduce unnecessary uh, latency into your uh, round trip. So that's why validation of the uh, authorization header and access tokens is actually based on a certificate based on public key provided uh, from a certificate that mobile first server use to generate uh, the authorization header and access tokens. So 
uh, by default, let's take a look here, server conf. Uh, by default, mobile first server comes with a key store that contains a certificate that is used here. Okay. Once you go production, you will probably want to use your own key store and your own keys. Okay. So uh, instead of using this key, key store, you can use either work like properties file or uh, GNDI entries in your server configuration to actually configure a certificate authority used by mobile first server. So here, that's the default. Okay, mobile first certificate authority. Okay, so you got a key store path, type, password, alias, and alias password. And that's actually the certificate that is used for uh, generating and signing your the access tokens and authorization header. Okay, so in production, you probably want to change that, but that's good enough for uh, development. Okay, and also uh, here in your Liberty configuration, you need to provide a public key server URL. So basically, this is the URL to your mobile first server. Okay, host port slash uh, context path. Okay, and uh, the auth filter will do the job of connecting there and getting the public key. Okay, so that's step number two. If you take a look at my server.n file, it has localhost slash new security model demo project. Cool. Next. So next step is to add a uh, below to feature to enable the mobile first platform auth in the first place. So I'm adding those two features. Okay, application security and of TAI. TAI stands for uh, Trust of the, uh, Trust Association uh, Interceptor, and that's a feature of uh, WebSphere. Okay, so uh, let's see what's next. Next, find your application. That's my application called External Java uh, Server. Okay, so I have it here. I've pre-deployed it. Uh, it will be also available for download uh, for this uh, for this blog. Okay, and you need to bind your application to TAI user role to TAI user role security role. So basically, what this means, you need to tell your application that it will, in some places, it might use a security role called TAI user role. Okay, and that's something that will define next okay so bind your application to this specific security role okay so step five we're actually starting to configure our security constraints okay so you need to define security constraints and uh, disable uh, SSO uh, also known as LTPA cookie so let's see what this actually means so here, the first element, okay, uh, user uh, auth TAI. Uh, first thing, you can define the cache size for your authorization filter. So cache size means how much tokens will be cached. So authorization filter doesn't validate uh, token on every request, but it caches the token. So in case token was validated successfully, it will be cached. Okay, and next time the client with the same token comes in, uh, the filter will not validate it, but it will uh, it will not validate it with a certificate, with a public key of the certificate, but it will validate it against the cache, okay, of uh, successfully validated tokens. So we also maintain a uh, cache of uh, tokens that, that failed, validation, etc. So by default it's 500, okay, so if you remove this uh, in general it will still be 500, but it's configurable. Okay, and uh, inside of that element, you can define your security constraints. So you can set that uh, you want to protect everything under external Java server, right? So everything under this uh, URL pattern, okay? HTTP method, all of them, all the HTTP methods, and everything uh, according to that rules, everything that fits those rules will be protected by a scope adapter authentication realm and that's exactly the same realm we've used previously okay and note that uh, this liberty server has no idea what this means it's just a string for liberty okay but it means a lot to mobile first uh, platform server and authorization server so here you've defined that everything under external java server 
path, okay, the URL uh, for all the HTTP methods will be protected by this scope. So you can do uh, you can do it other way. You can do some other URL. You can select specific methods you want to protect, like for example, only get and post. And you can also say that uh, scope is realm one, realm two, realm three, various realms. So uh, here you define your security constraints. So next thing is uh, web app security and here we're uh, disabling single sign-on. So if you're familiar with uh, WebSphere or Liberty, you know what LTPA uh, cookie is, okay? And basically this is the single sign-on feature provided by those application servers. So it means once user is authenticated, success will be authenticated successfully, okay? The server will generate an LTPA cookie for him. Okay, so next time user request comes in, uh, it will have this uh, cookie. Okay, and in case the request have this cookie, the server will start by validating the LTPA cookie, and only in case LTPA cookie is not valid, it will try to validate uh, some other information. So basically, what it means in case we leave it enabled, and you can leave it enabled if the behavior I'm going to describe is good from your is okay from your perspective. What this means, if you leave this enabled, the access token will be required only once. Okay, so and once access token will be successfully validated for one time, the server will generate LTPA cookie and uh, subsequent requests will be authenticated according to that LTPA cookie. So even if your access token, even if your authorization header is expired, as long as you have that LTPA, tookie, uh, LTPA cookie in place, your request will still be able to go through the authorization filter. Okay. So in case this is not the behavior you want, in case you want uh, authorization filter to validate access uh, access tokens on every request, you can set up uh, this property, uh, web application security, single sign-on enabled, false. So starting from here, the server will not generate LTPA cookies. Okay, so next step is uh, define a basic uh, user registry. So this is just something required by uh, Liberty. It will never be used, but Liberty wants it to be here, so it's here. Okay, otherwise you'll start to get uh, exceptions. And step seven, which is optional, okay, uh, you can define uh, properties of your uh, analytics server. So as I've said, if this Liberty runs inside of your infrastructure, inside of your enterprise, you can define URL, username and password of your analytics server and the authorization filter will actually uh, report analytics for incoming requests uh, to the analytics server. Okay, so this is extremely convenient. So at this phase we've configured server, okay, to actually uh, use uh, mobile first of uh, authorization filter okay so we don't we still don't have any code for now server is ready so we've prepared our code okay we're gonna close server XML and let's take a look at the application that's actually going to run on that server so I have a very simple application with a single uh, servlet API it's called API servlet okay so note that in my sample I'm using uh, server 30. Okay, uh, if you're uh, using server servlet uh, 2 x or uh, basically anything below 3.0, the way to protect your uh, services will be a little bit different. You can see it actually in the project uh, WebXML. You'll need to do things like that. So you'll need to define in your WebXML security constraints and uh, URL patterns and actually say that uh, this constraint, this URL pattern is protected by TAI user role. Okay, it's a little bit more complex but still uh, not, nothing uh, too complex, right? But if you uh, use servlet uh, 3.0 you can do it uh, much more much simpler. Okay, you can use annotation. But before we actually enable the protection, let's see whether it works, okay? So uh, currently this is a very basic servlet that's available at slash API slash say hello. Okay, and let's go to Chrome and try to invoke this servlet. So localhost, if I recall correctly, that's the URL. Okay, so I'm going to uh, localhost 9080, and that's where my Liberty is actually hosted. External Java server, okay, that's my uh, server. Slash API, slash say hello. This is exactly where we are. External Java server, slash API, 
slash hello. Okay, so and I'm getting my data. So now I want to protect the server to if I want it to be protected, okay, by TAI user role. Okay, so all I need to do is to define the server security, that's the annotation, okay, and said that server security uh, is uh, has a HTTP constraint of allowed roles, TAI user role. Starting now, if I refresh it, okay, I will not get anything. And if I go to network tab, I will see that I'm getting 401. And inside of that 401, I can actually see that I need to authenticate for scope adapter authentication realm. Okay, once again, currently my external Liberty server is protected by mobile first uh, authorization filter, okay, and the authorization filter intercept that request and said, okay, now you need to authenticate for that specific scope. So I got a feeling that my access token from previous uh, attempts is still valid. Okay, okay. Ooh, so here I, I see a different problem. No access control. Uh, okay, yeah. So my website is loaded from uh, this port, from this URL, and I'm actually trying to access using Ajax a different URL. Yeah, this is something blocked by uh, browsers. Okay, but I do want to use browser to actually uh, showcase everything in the here in DevTools. So I will copy the URL, I will close Chrome, and I will open Chrome with uh, disable web security. Okay, so disable web security will actually make sure that I can uh, make Ajax requests to uh, different URLs. Okay, so uh, do not run Chrome with this flag uh, in standard scenarios, right? Only, only, only when you're debugging stuff. Okay, so if I click get secret data from external Java server, wait, let's actually see the code for that. Let's see the code for that. Get data from Java server. Once again, I'm creating the request URL, HTTP, server IP, port, and my path. Okay, so note that in this case, I'm not working with mobile first server, so I need to give a absolute URL. Okay, but besides URL, the part of uh, making request and handling the response is absolutely the same as with Java adapter. Note, it's absolutely the same, not, no difference besides URL, this part and this part is absolutely the same. Okay, because I'm still using a resource protected by mobile first uh, auth filter, okay, authorization filter. So let's see how this works, external Java server. Well, it actually gives me uh, data immediately without the need to authenticate because I, has, uh, I have uh, access token from previous attempts and it's valid for uh, 60 minutes. So I'm gonna clean my access token, I'm gonna try again. Okay, and this time it asks me to, to authenticate. So let's see once again. I'm making secret uh, get secret data request to external Java server. Okay, so I'm not in a scope of mobile first server anymore. That's external Java server. So if you take a look at that, say hello goes to external server port 9080. Okay and I'm getting unauthorized with the scope. So the framework takes care of that automatically. So it knows that it needs to get authorization header, so it makes automatically request to, okay, 180, so new security model demo project authorization, that's mobile first uh, authorization server, right? So automatically it makes request there. And since it's asked to authenticate with that adapter authentication realm, the response contains challenges for adapter authentication realm, exactly the same as we used before. Okay, so for login I do MFP, MFP, and after a couple of round trips, okay, uh, eventually I'm getting, well, you can see it here, secret data from Java server. Okay, so once again, note that once I'm authenticated here, I can do requests to any source, right? And since they all protected, well, no JS, not yet. It's all they all protected by the same uh, authorization filter, right? Uh, the token is valid for any one of them. Okay. So uh, let's see how do we get more data here. So uh, 
step eight, as we said, we've enabled protection for this specific uh, servlet. And step nine, we can use the API provided by authorization filter to get your user, device, and application identities. Okay, so if you want to use that API, you will need to add a reference to the jar file that we've added previously to Liberty. Okay, that jar file that we have in extensions. You need to add it to your class path, otherwise you will not be able to get uh, code completion okay and uh, all the nifty features it provides so uh, I'm using WL credential uh, object okay and uh, from color subject WS uh, subject get color subject I'm getting public credential of a type of a class WL credential okay and then I'm uh, well basically I'm getting security context from it and that's a JSON object plain JSON object and I'm setting this security context to my response as a security context property okay so if I do this once again I'm getting security context and I got IBM mobile first uh, user which has the user ID it tells you how it was obtained authenticated by adapter authentication realm it has the custom attributes we've defined remember in adapter authentication you got information about your application ID environment version you got information about your device well it doesn't have anything since I'm using uh, preview okay if I would have used uh, if I would have used the actual device I would see the information here okay so basically uh, my third-party server external th server knows information got information about my user my application and my device and it doesn't need to worry about authentication or anything like it okay so and of course uh, from security context you can get each piece of information separately like user identity by security context dot get IMF user IMF device or IMF application so the last thing to show would be actually how to do the same with node.js adapter so I'll start uh, with the client side code because client side code is absolutely the same you make request URL to the URL so my node server will be put on a port 3000 okay slash API slash say hello okay and uh, it's exactly the same API you use WL resource requests you, you do not get request you get data and you got your response text so client side wise it's exactly the same code since it's protected by the same filter okay the same uh, mobile first authorization filter so let's take a look at my uh, node.js server so my node.js server give me a second okay currently it's uh, not protected okay and once again if you want to know the steps for protecting your node.js server you have everything uh, in my server.js uh, file okay I have step-by-step -step instructions how to do that so uh, before we actually start protecting let's see what happens right now okay so uh, I will use Express, okay, and that's a Node.js framework for creating uh, websites or uh, web services or basically anything web, right? Uh, I will create an Express application, okay, and uh, I will say that once uh, someone tries to get slash API slash hello, that's the callback I'm going to call. And this callback will say, will return me secret data from Node.js server, right? And uh, the rest is commented out right now, so it's a very, very simple, basic application. Okay, and uh, eventually I will start my server application listen on port 3000. Okay, so currently it's extremely, extremely simple. Okay, let's start my server. Let's see. Server started. Okay, so if I go back to Chrome and I do localhost. API slash say hello I'm actually getting this JSON okay and incoming request slash API slash say hello so now I want to protect this uh, URL I want to protect this thing okay so now I'm actually starting to follow instructions in my uh, my server.js so first thing is uh, well you may need to make sure that node.js is actually installed on your uh, environment right and you need to install three modules the first one is express 
okay and you do it I'm stopping my server so you do in uh, npm install express so you will need node package manager okay so I have uh, express installed so it would be really fast so Express, as I said, that's a framework, that's a module to actually simplify developing of uh, different types of uh, web servers. Then I need to install Passport. Passport, that's another node uh, module that actually simplifies uh, authentication and protection of uh, web services. So I do sudo npm install Passport. Okay, and we, it also will be rather quick. And then once I have Passport, I need to install the addition, the extension of the Passport that a, a mobile first platform provides called Passport MFP Token Validation. So that's the last thing that I need to install. Okay, so once I have all of those installed, I can actually start coding. So, uh... I still I'm using my uh, Express application, okay. But now I can actually import uh, Mobile First Platform Passport and Mobile First Platform Strategy. So Passport, that's uh, see it as the filter, as authentication filter. That's actually something that's protecting your web endpoints. And strategy, that's the rules to protect your endpoints. So Passport has a strategy. Each passport has a strategy. So we'll start by uh, configuring uh, the strategy. Okay, so strategy config, uh, you've already seen uh, something similar when we work with Java server. So it starts with public key server URL. Exactly the same, you need to provide the URL to your mobile first server. So the authorization filter will be able to get the public key of the CA certificate to validate uh, incoming authorization header and uh, access tokens, okay? So you got optional uh, features like you can con uh, that you can configure like cache size or analytics settings like URL, username and password, so this is very similar. So step two is basically define a strategy configuration. We're creating an object here called MFP strategy config, defining the configuration. Step three is that we're going to tell the password to use new strategy with that configuration. Okay, so we're telling Passport that uh, created previously, use the new, new strategy with the configuration we've defined before. Okay, so now that we've configured our Passport to use this strategy, okay, let's tell our application that it needs to use this Passport. Okay, so uh, we have a passport configured, we've configured strategy, then we told passport use this strategy, and then we told application use this passport. Okay, good. Now we need to actually uh, understand how do we make, uh, how do we configure things for uh, every request, because we might have uh, different URLs with different uh, uh, security configuration, authentication configuration, etc. So you can define an object, I'm calling it per request authentication config, you can call it whatever you want, right? And basically, this is the configuration of, uh, this is one type of a configuration. So one kind of protection that you might apply to some of your URLs, okay? So uh, you create th this kind of uh, request authentication config by using MFP passport.authenticate. You supply a mobile first strategy, that's uh, something that needs to be here hard-coded. Uh, the first argument and the second argument that's actually a configuration. So session false is similar to the disabling uh, LTPA cookie on Liberty. Okay, so session false means Node.js will not try to create HTTP session. Okay, but instead it will require uh, authentication header and access token to be present on every request. And scope is scope. So basically you can define your scope or your realms that you want to protect resource with here. Okay, so we have a per request authentication config. Okay, so we're not changing anything in request callback just yet. Okay, but instead of this API, we will actually use this API. So now uh, we're telling to application whenever, whenever get request is going to be made to slash API slash say hello. 
right? Use this security configuration, this authentication configuration. Basically, do not create HTTP sessions, and this URL is protected by this scope, okay? And uh, once uh, all the authentication has fulfilled, we have authentication, that's the callback for that request. That's actually the code that's going to handle request once, author once uh, authorization phase has completed, okay? So let's restart the server and see what changed. So if I go back to Chrome and I try to refresh it, I'm getting unauthorized, okay? That's because currently, let's take a look at the network. Currently, my uh, web endpoint is protected by mobile first authorization filter and it tells you need to authorize for a scope adapter authentication realm. Okay, so once again, similar to Java adapters, similar to Liberty Server, authorization is required now to access this URL. Okay, so let's go to my application and let's try to access uh, the Node.js server. So yeah, as expected, I still have a valid uh, authorization uh, header here, okay, in, in context of this application, so I am able to actually get this data. but. Once again, I'm going to cheat a little bit and remove access token from local storage. Okay, so now once I try to get data from Node.js server, I'm getting login form. And that's the same login form once again, okay? So I'm going to say hello and note, note, it's, it's on a host 3000. Okay, so once again, that's a request to the node server, okay? And node server doesn't know anything about adapter authentication, but the framework detects that it, or the authorization is required here. It goes to the authorization endpoint on the mobile first server, asks for a authorization header for this specific uh, scope. As the result, since that scope is uh, associated with adapter-based authentication, I'm getting my regular standard adapter-based authentication challenge. I need to authenticate, MFP, MFP, and eventually I'm getting data from a uh, Node.js server. So once again, as you can see, I can I see my user here, okay, ID, MFP, authenticated by adapter authentication realm, custom attributes, device, because I'm in a browser, I don't see any device properties, and I am F application, I'm getting my application properties. So once again, I'm working currently with Node.js server that doesn't know anything about my uh, security infrastructure. It doesn't know anything about my authentication settings. It just knows that the specific URL protected by specific scope. Okay, so it knows that this URL is protected by this scope. And that's what it reports to the client. Client using a mobile first SDK actually obtains the authorization token. In the middle of the process, it authenticates according to the rules defined on the server. And once again, it returns to the node server, this time with authorization header, and this time it's getting access to the resource. Okay, so I wanna finish it with this picture. So request for a OnePlus scope, not authorized. Get authorization, that's the adapter authentication. In eventually you get an authorization header and with this header you can actually get your data. Okay, So I hope this uh, theoretical part and uh, practical demo part was useful for you to actually understand how this works. Okay, so uh, Auth uh, security model allows to protect uh, virtually any kind of resources, ex internal resources, external resources with uh, mobile first security. Okay, and your protected resources do, do not need to worry about user authentication. They do not need to worry about connecting to uh, different authentication gateways and LDAP registries. Okay, because they will get a authorization header that contains access token that uh, tells um, authorization filter whether a client is authorized to access. Okay, and it also contains identities token which tells the application everything about user identity, device identity, and uh, application identity, which is extremely convenient. So, thank you.